Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back to the channel. This is your host Carmina and today we are welcoming back Mirella, who's an astrologer, Cards of Truth reader. And I called her today because I wanted to hear what she thinks about the upcoming lunar eclipse on May 26th. It's going to be very soon. So welcome Mirella, how are you doing? Hey, Carmina. Thanks so much for having me. Hello, everyone. It's been a while. I missed you. <laughs> we haven't actually connected that much during this crazy pandemia. So it's very nice to be out and about in astrology style. Thanks. I'm doing okay. How about you? I'm doing well. So I'm curious if you have like good news uh, about this eclipse. I actually do. I have some good news and some crazy news. So um, May 26, depending on where you are in the world, we have this total uh, lunar eclipse. I don't have the map, but maybe you'll uh, put yeah. the map on the screen as to which part of the world will it get um, affected. Uh, there you are. So we have most of North America, South America, and then going to Australia, it's like that. Almost half of the world will get impacted. Then here it comes um, on Asia and Russia. So um, again, half of the world. Now, Europe is not going to be directly affected by this. And it says if you are in an eclipse spot, then you get affected more profoundly. But these are the kind of eclipses that are going to affect Gemini and Sagittarius mainly, but all of us are going to get impacted. And the reason why that is, is because these specific eclipses are happening when the south node is with the moon in Sagittarius and the north node is with the sun, the uh, Venus and Mercury, and Mercury rules um, Gemini. So it's going to be uh, a very potent um, eclipse and check this out we've had this eclipse on the same axis last summer so uh, late spring uh, the beginning of the summer we had a series of eclipses that hit just the same spots uh, Gemini Sagittarius and once we're done with this one the summer eclipses in 2021 you are going to be free of eclipses for 18, 20 years, something like that. So I don't think um, we've had these eclipses since 2003 in this position. So um, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'll uh, talk maybe a little bit because I think it's going to influence relationships a lot. Um, but I don't know. I think for some people that are very set in their ways and they had a long-term view on how their relationships should be looking like and they thought they know better <laughs> um, in fact this eclipse the south node is on a on a it's on Sagittarius which is about long-term goals but as far as lunar uh, nakshatras um, this lunar eclipse happens in Giesta and Giesta is like that older sister that umbrella that protects us and it's like we know best we go for what we know well here comes north node on Gemini with the sun with Venus Venus and Mercury Venus and Mercury being these uh, planets that allow us to relate to others to make it happen well they come and it gives the moon like a wake up call. Hey, hey, things are about to change here. Um, and so this North Node actually is in a constellation called Rohini. And Rohini is about the blushing bride. It's about fertility. It's uh, the favorite place of the moon. Um, Rohini, right? And it's about growth. It's how much, what do we need in order to grow. In fact, um, you know how we have at the um, world level, we have this news that during pandemic, the natality rate sort of slowed down in the world. Well, <laughs> until January 2020, when North Node goes through Rohini, I'm willing to bet the natality rate will go up because of 
the potential of a north node here. But um, it's not going to be easy. I think um, people are going to search for something if they are set in a relationship that's not healthy. Maybe it's codependent. This north node on Gemini is going to force them to think outside of the box. Maybe it's going to give them some options, some possibilities that um, they're not going to feel comfortable with at first and they're not going to be solid ones. North node is here to amplify. It's here to allow us to take a trip in the unfamiliar, but it's not here to guarantee us anything. So it's not always going to be something permanent, but it's an invitation for Gemini. So if you guys have Sun in Gemini, Moon, the Ascendant, or Atmakaraka, which is the self planet in Gemini and Sagittarius, uh, your relationships are going to be bound to get um, a wake up call. For Gemini people, um, it's about finding something new about yourself and accepting that Maybe you need more. Maybe you want to stay excited. Gemini is such a sign of men and women, duality. Um, classic texts say about Gemini that's about sexual intercourse of men and women, gambling, amusements, crafts, music, singing, smiles, um, exercise, magic weapons, um, conversations, good advice, couples acquisition of money and wealth and all that good stuff so such a clever um way rahu is trying to wake us up to move us around and again to those that are set in stone in their relationships this is going to be a time of change uh, talking about sagittarius sagittarius people that have codependent relationships that are not quite healthy I think this series of eclipses, probably it also shook them up a little bit last year, but I think that's gonna, this is the second time around. So things aren't gonna fly as much <laughs> anymore. And what I like about, um, and then I'll, I'll finish my, my long sentence here. Um, what I also like is Jupiter for all of us just jumped into Pisces. And Pisces, it's its own sign. And it's a place of, you know, looking for that inner happiness that the external world cannot necessarily provide us. Now, he is coming back to Aquarius in September, I think. So he's not going to be here permanently for now. In 2022, he will. But during this eclipse, he's actually giving, he, he manifests, it's a Rashi aspect in Gemini astrology so he will manifest very strongly this eclipse so when he gives he gives tremendously so people can break up and then come back or just try to find the best relationship possible um, people are going to get in new relationships and i think jupiter is going to give us that wisdom and that grace to try to find something it's almost like, okay, I know abstractly what works for me. Jupiter is in Sata Bishak Nakshatra. Uh, but I think here I can really find my happiness. So I really, really like that um, about the upcoming eclipses. But make no mistakes, it's going to produce a little bit of extremes in relationships. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Mirela, thank you for um, for sharing that with us. I think you made a great summary. Okay, so what I see here is that Venus is squaring Neptune, which can lead to some fantasy life that maybe is not going to go completely right. It's going to go maybe because uh, Neptune has to do with seduction, fantasy, escapism, uh, but also spirituality. So a square is not a... Um, a comfortable aspect it's a, an aspect that shakes you up you know like you said this eclipse would do for some people it would shake them up so there's going to be some tension with fantasies getting somewhere higher sp with your spirituality because i i have read in some texts that they consider neptune a higher octave of venus so maybe for artists it's a good time because even if it's a square if they put in the hard work they can make something happen. Also Venus with the North Node in the same sign. 
the square can be a very productive aspect, but you have to work for it more and get past the frustrations that come up. Because of the North Node influencing three planets, it's going to have uh, a lot of impact on a lot of people. But um, I really don't think it's like such a difficult eclipse like we had in the past. I think this one is more lighthearted. And even if some less desirable things happen, like you said, Jupiter is very well placed. So that's going to help. Mars there is also uh, trining Neptune. So that's also giving an element of fantasy in your action. And like, what are you going forward to? Like, what are you moving towards is the courage to do something uh, motivated by something real and concrete or are you based on a fantasy so what would your uh, like advice be for people during this eclipse like should i move forward should i go with the flow or should i be more cautious with my actions especially in relationships what do you think it is i was actually having this same question for you in my head i think the only thing the biggest mistake people could do with this series of eclipses, even though it carries them in the unknown, is to force themselves or to control them or to try to control the future. So I think if they go with the craziness and the flow and it could be nice craziness, I mean, who doesn't like relationships and this Mercury and Venus, they're actually in the searching constellation of Marigashira. So it's quite normal to explore but don't set. It's like, okay, I like this a little bit and I like that, but do I have to really make a decision long term? So I think I would advise people, whatever this brings them, because for each ascendant, it's going to activate a different house, this eclipse. But I would say, whatever it brings them, they have to just go with the flow and just live in the moment. Because that's where it all stays. Like, don't think about the future so much, though. We all live these crazy times where all our plans, long-term plans sort of changed, right? So that's the whole lesson of, of last year's summer eclipses and this year's summer eclipses. Go with the crazy, go with the flow, because I think that's where the growth is. Um, and again, this, especially with this Rohini and Jupiter in Satabishak Nakshatra, that's all about searching. Um, and this brings a sensitive point for me because w Jupiter in water signs is so powerful. And last time when Jupiter crossed the water sign in Scorpio, uh, my interest in astrology sort of just sparked and it never stopped since. And then I went through a, a, a sun eclipse that I actually traveled to see and I wasn't, I didn't know anything about astrology at that time. And um, it's, it's changed my life completely. And I didn't understand that until after, once I found this, say very shortly after everything happened. So I'm very excited about just Jupi this Jupiter in, in, in Pisces. So I think people should just go with the flow. That's what this is. And in Gemini, it's, it's an airy sign. And Check this out. This Saturn just is barely going into retrograde motion. So both of these eclipses are going to be with a Saturn retrograde, with a Pluto retrograde. And later on, June around June 10, when we have the solar eclipse, which I think is going to be rougher than this one, Saturn and Pluto will go retrograde. Mercury will retrograde, but it's in its own sign in Gemini. However, Venus moves away. Venus, the planet of relationships and harmony, he's going with Mars. He's joining Mars in Cancer. So I think um, maybe that eclipse won't be so kind, but the fact that Saturn is in an air sign and it, it's strong in its own sign getting retrograde and we have this like four forces, four, four energies in Gemini, that also invites us to, to search, to move freely like the air. It, there is not so much influence in the whole eclipse. We don't really have much fire going on. We have South Node in a fire sign. And then of course this uh, lunar eclipse, but South Node tells us, okay, you already got this. Just see what you do with the inspiration. Just see what you do with the plans. So it's all about air and water and moving things. And then the only other earth sign that's populated is Taurus. 
and Uranus is there for until 2025. So it's like, okay, not time to settle in, not time, to, this is not a time for stability. I'm actually really excited. What do you think of this um, Pluto uh, retrograde? I mean, I know for 16, 20 years is in Capricorn, um, but this Pluto seems to also want to tell us to sort of let go of control. <laughs> yeah, Pluto is, um, it, it's, a, it's a tough one. Like you can say, okay, you know, it, it teaches you to let go and it, it teaches you to become more authentic. But through that, uh, it's the, the letting go process for us, most of us who are not like uh, living on the Himalaya and levitating, it's not easy. So uh, going back and forth retrograde, it means it's going to go back and forth into people's cusp. Those problems that they thought they, you know, finished, they're going to get another chance. Okay, now you're going to get something else in your relationship. It's in, if it's on the seventh cusp, you're going to get maybe another difficulty with your life path if it's on the ascendant. You're, maybe you're going to have some health problems if it's on your ascendant. It's not to punish you. It's just something that you're ego cannot control anymore and you have to let go of that control there and just see what is left after Pluto sweeps off the less authentic parts of that so what can you do we all have Pluto somewhere in a chart at, at all times and now going back and forth in Capricorn it's about concrete things and also on a world scale it's about the worldly structures which are kind of crumbling in a way you know it's like things are not as they used to be they change very rapidly in the past years especially after that uh, December eclipse in 2019 so it's really interesting to see the the shifts and the changes also on a global scale and you know it's interesting that um Mars, ever since it got into its sign of debilitation in cancer, we had this conflict that was happening, right? Israeli, mm -hmm. um, Palestinian. Yeah. Well, now they are on demand, but yeah, we almost Mars have an opposition. It's not there yet. But Pluto just went retrograde. So I feel like this is not going to be easy. And mm -hmm. it can open contradiction and it can open up maybe the possibility for people not to, so it, fights can get explosive i feel like yeah uh, so people should watch out for that right like arguments and stuff yes of course of course i i definitely see that on a global scale because of all the events that have been happening people are more touchy and maybe a little bit of, more radical with their anger like really explosive because pluto is like a higher octave of mars it, it kind of amplifies that martial energy and on a collective level because these are transpersonal planets so when you have that i've seen our earthquakes as well so maybe that's also something like there was even like the couple of days ago there was a big earthquake in china seven degrees so i think that's also one of the mars pluto opposition effects and you know what I'll, i've i've been watching for sun um, jupiter every time they get into a, a hard aspect so mm -hmm. right now um sun was just squaring jupiter i've also noticed that because i think i don't know I, i've noticed that too yeah. mars is about earth so wow yeah yeah mars is born okay. of the earth right mars yes born of the earth and the lucky one too i've seen a lot of people having interest in in property selling buying vehicles anything that's like a forced um house yeah. you know what i was going to ask i really am dying to know about human design because we're gonna look I... at the human design but let's look at the cards of truth first <gasps> yes yes let's look at the cards <laughs> of truth <laughs> So a six of clubs, that's like quite inspired, right? It's, um, uh, it feels like it's comfortable with its inspiration. I wonder if it's going to be a six of clubs worldwide or is it going to be a seven of clubs for some people? Maybe for some of them because it's after sunrise, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, seven of clubs or six, six of clubs. That's a little different. 
but it's the clubby energy. So like we were talking about Gemini, you were talking about that airiness. The clubs also have that airiness, that airiness element to them. So it's more mental, even if like you're excited about maybe a new relationship, maybe it's going to be like a mental excitement or whatever it is you're excited about. It's going to be, you know, like mental curiosity, intellectual enthusiasm, something like that. And this clubby thing is also bringing that element. So if you get a, if you're in the part of the world that gets the six of clubs, it's going to be definitely smoother <laughs> and then the seven of clubs where you have to be more cynical and like more pragmatic in a way. And the six of clubs is more enjoying. It's a Venusian airy quality, yes. just like the Venus in Gemini that we talked about earlier. So what, what do, do you think about this chart besides the, the birth card of the eclipse, which is maybe the six of clubs for most of us? Um, well, I'm, I'm looking at the ecliptic. I'm like, okay, here comes the change. That's another ecliptic. Ecliptic is the past, right, that we're walking on. Um, so if the solar eclipse happens on an ecliptic of five of clubs, that means some change. That means some crisis. Maybe things aren't going the way we want. But isn't five of clubs trying to like get their hands on something and, and just do something about it? It's like very active, very Jupiterian, uh, very judgmental. So, <laughs> um, but I think it goes well with the six of clubs. So in order to get fulfilled, in order to feel like we're progressing and since we're talking about relationships i mean we do have that queen of hearts moon there <laughs> um and then we have a three of hearts venus that sort of goes hand in hand with what i just said explore enjoy mm. and don't look for something permanent yes necessarily <laughs> yeah definitely venus uh rahu mercury definitely a lot of fun time <laughs> yes, so he, secrets do you think mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of secrets during these eclipses well it depends where where it is if it happens in your 12th house in your eighth house or in your fourth house the, the hidden houses the water houses there's more likely to be a lot of secrets definitely and I also, you mentioned this uh, six of clubs, we have the five of clubs, but also the 10 of clubs on the Mars card and the ace of clubs on the Saturn card. So a very clubby spread for this eclipse. It's good that you're letting go of the emotional victimization, hopefully that with the seven of hearts there is like, okay, I'm not going to suffer today. Let me do something fun. Hopefully <laughs> that would be the best expression of this. Yes, I like that. And then um, I think it can get pretty spiritual as well. For those people interested in sp spirituality, um, this could be a time of inspiration, of trying something new, of um, advancing. Like I feel like Rahu is all about getting into new territory. And mm -hmm. so, but look at that Jupiter. Jupiter is a king of spades. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, and then it's connected into a 10 of spades and then it's connected into like the ace of spades Neptune I'm not seeing very well it's also yes. going in that card yes. um, so I do think that requires some wisdom mm -hmm. it requires some letting go so it's yeah. not all bubbly as we uh, as, as it's hinted yeah, I think it's, it's it's good that you pointed that out because whenever I see that moon K2 combination, it's always very deep spirituality. It can be a very introverted and very hidden, but it also has a lot of spiritual potential. So as we always go with the nodes, we start from the south node. We said, okay, we had that. Let me try something else. Then we try the fun in the north node. And then maybe we go back to the south node with a deeper spiritual lesson. So I love well, what you just said. Yeah. Yes, so nicely said. Yeah, yeah so, so it's, it's a nice eclipse. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, our heads are going to, my personal moon is in Sagittarius, but it's at the end of Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. And I felt these eclipses last year and I'll feel them again. And I'm going to enjoy, you know why? Because it's the moon, the eclipses are about the moon. You know, either way, I think Sagittarius, whoever has some planets in Sagittarius should be open to something they don't know, they don't necessarily see um, and get some something, they learn something from it. It's exciting. 
Yes, and let me share also the human design because you asked me and uh, yes. why not? Yes, I'm dying to know because I love human design yes. and it's because of you. <laughs> I manifested you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's see. Well, I think the human design chart also would change a little bit according to the moon, depending where you are, but I put it um, where I am in Belgium. And I think it's really nice because, you know, it's an eclipse. We would look at the, the black part more because the black part is what's happening actually on May 26th. And uh, the red part is what was happening 88 days before May 26th. So uh, if we look at the moon, the moon there is in the 24th gate. This is the gate of power. It's on the, the sacral center. So 34 or 24, sorry, it's small and I can't see. The, the 34 gate. Okay, here thanks. Is, it's uh, on the sacral center and the moon is there. So the moon, which is one of the, it, I mean, it's the main star of the eclipse, right? So it, it's here is like power. The, the sacral center is um, your center of vitality is where you get your juice from to flow. So if your sacral is defined, then you have a consistent uh, power, you know, if you do something that you really love, you, you don't get drained, but everyone has a sacral, even if the sacral is open, we still have that, we still have energy, but it just comes and goes, it's, it's not as consistent, this eclipse has a consistent sacral, so there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of creativity, because sacral has to do with creativity, with energy, uh, life force and the 34th gate is the gate of power it's like the power to do things and it's really nice that the sun and moon create this channel together the 2034 the 20 is on the the throat so i see a lot of definition on the throat in this eclipse so manifestation expression uh, doing things this is actually the 3420 is the ultimate channel that makes a manifesting generator so a pure manifesting generator is made by connecting the gate 34 on the sacral to the gate 20 on the throat you you have the power to do something and then you invest that power in actually expressing it so it's empowered expression that's the the 34 20 gate so i think it's it's really good you know like you said go with the flow go for it even if it's not something that's going to be forever for something it's good to explore because there is a lot of power of manifestation it could be something very creative or it could be some insights that you have about your personal life but it's good not to be like really passive in this eclipse whether if it's your physical or spiritual or emotional life I think it's good to to express it to go with that energy I love it. And look at all those. You have another, I don't even know how many uh, channels that are already defined. So I feel like this eclipse is, can do a lot, right? Isn't yeah. that? Because I keep seeing connections there. <laughs> how yeah. But, I see but, a connection in is, the head. This is, only, this is actually the only connection that is made with the, the planets <sighs> that are today because it's the black side. So the black side is the, the chart of the 26th of May and the red is 88 days before. So okay. if we would take it just as that day, we would say, okay, this is the only full channel that is made. The others are, you know, half the design. If we can say, because some people, when I did these videos in the past, looking at like an eclipse with human design, they say, you can't look at an eclipse like that. You just have to look with the chart of that moment. But why not? Because an eclipse can also be like, uh, an event that is born that uh, is born out of what happened 88 days before so in that respect i don't think this is like a wrong way to look at it but if you want to be pure and strict about it only the black you just see black you don't see any red and even if you just see black you still see this amazing manifesting generator channel it's like you have the power that backs it up you have the fuel and then you also can express it so isn't sacral about sexual energy too? It's all, Yeah, it's creative energy, also sexual energy, definitely. It's the go. ovaries, the testicles, uh, that's the, the sacral. So it's creative, 
an energy and that creative energy so all sorts of creativity exactly it can create a baby wow. or it can create a work of art or it can create you know your job that you really like or whatever it is that you you're busy with that's what the sac sacral creates <laughs> oh nice well that sort of goes hand in hand with what we've been seeing so far right Oh, let's also look at the nodes. So the, the, the south node that is going to be uh, close to the moon is in the gate nine. That's the gate of focus. That's like attention to details, like you're really focusing on something. You're like really going for it. You don't sleep at night. And that's usually, you know, the eclipse energy. That's the, the full moon energy. Like it's hard to sleep at night anyway, but it's going to get amplified with that south node in the nine. And the North Node is in gate 16, and that's the gate of enthusiasm. So <laughs> that only just goes hand in hand with what we said before, right? Enthusiasm, excitement, curiosity. It's just like, it's not necessarily because it's not connected to the 48. So it's not necessarily something that is, it can be profound, but it's not, I mean, the premise is just excitement. You can make it something profound, but it's not really, you know, that's not it necessarily. For some people, it will be more like a surface experience. For other people, they can make it profound if they want to, but the excitement will be there, the enthusiasm. Oh, yay. There you <laughs> go. So, uh, so gate nine with the south node kind of goes hands in hands, like you said about getting focused mm -hmm. and that Sagittarius energy that we've also seen. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of try to find a middle ground, but the invitation is to follow that excitement in North Node, in Gate 16, it exactly. kind of goes hand in hand with what we've seen with Rohini, with Gemini, with the other two planets in Rigashira. Uh, see, it's like, it's hard once you find these systems not to see extra. Like Exactly, it's good to, to find the blind spots. Um, yeah, you, you find a more like 3D view uh, if you use like, okay, from this and from that. So I think it's really nice to, to have all these together. Yes. Yes. So I hope everybody has like a wonderful eclipse, even though it's like uh, out of control and it takes us um, on some path that we ever, I, I've noticed with Gemini, people are like, um, wow, I never thought I'm going to try that. Or Sagittarius people are like, I never thought I would put up with that. <laughs> So here you have, don't try to control it because it's only going to get worse. And what's interesting is when we have an eclipse, like a, a lunar eclipse, it's supposed to be a full moon. This mm -hmm. is a time when the moon is in opposition with the sun. So the moon is supposed to make us well-rounded, well-aware of what sun wants to do. But when it's blocked, it's, it's an eclipse, right? So when it's blocked, it's not the sun that's blocking it. It's dear Earth. We exactly. live on Earth. It sits in the middle between sun and the moon. So it's our shade that shades that moon. I think our own fears can come through. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, what if this is not long term? What if this is this? And then so we can get our own things uh, around this moon and kind of can get controlling because <laughs> south node with the moon can try to hold on. Yeah. To you That's know, what's the moral point. thing to do and all that um, good yeah. stuff. So don't let that just go with the North Node. Just let it carry you. And then all of those fears are normal. I think people should understand fear and excitement and um, opportunities, new opportunities are part of growth. And I think this eclipse wants us to grow. Thank you, Mirella. Good. During an eclipse, like the, the, the moon is obstructed. So our mind has a little time to, to, to be alone. And maybe then it doesn't receive the light from the sun and it gets scared. Like, oh my God, what is it? Why, where is like the, where am I going to? You know, what is the purpose? But it's also like you said, it's like, it's good to reflect a little bit. It doesn't have to be always, okay, this is my purpose for the next 20, 30 years. You know, let's see what it is now. Let's see how I feel now. Let's see, let's be a little in the moment. So <laughs> it was good that you pointed it out. So thank you again, Mirella. Will you be uh, also um, doing a video about the 10th of June eclipse that's coming up? 
I think so. Um, or maybe we'll do a video together. We'll, we'll see. Um, do you have a channel in English? I know you have a channel in Romanian. If I have any Romanian subscribers, uh, just go and uh, subscribe. Yes, I'm very active. I have astrology a of videos <laughs> on my Astrologie cu Mirela. Yes. Um, and you know, I've had an English channel um, for a while, but then I moved out of United States. So I kind of close that channel i reopened one it's called orion astrology like o-r-i-o-n like the constellation orion. of orion yeah. um I, I probably have two videos there but you guys can find me on my website which is the astrology shop.org o-r-g and i do offer consultations in both english and romanian Thank you. Yeah, for mentioning Let's that. You can find me, you can find my work. I'll try to post more in English. Oh, and I do have a, a channel for cards that mm -hmm. I also started. It's called Five of Diamonds. If you want to find me there as well. And if you like Cards of Truth, uh, I'm going to try to post most often. But see, I, I haven't been so active. Uh, Maybe this community. eclipse will, uh, I don't know, will activate Change that. <laughs> yes um so i uh thank you thank you so much for having me always a pleasure a pleasure for so me. much fun i learned so much from you and i'm looking forward for your classes ah thank you Mirella. looking forward for your classes i'm gonna tell everybody about it because your classes are awesome i've taken quite a few classes from you yes you did <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, thank you, Mirela. Thank you, everyone. And I hope you enjoy this time and at least do your best with it. So I'll see you again soon with more videos. Bye. Bye.